everybody, welcome back to This is the Police 2, December 2nd. We had a huge tactical mission yesterday. Got us a bunch of those, like, uh, beer can top things. And we're saving them. We're gonna, we're gonna hire, like, a superstar one day. I believe in it. Percy, Mr. Nash, I'm back in Freeburg. My parents were glad about my visit. We even went together to my brother's grave and cleaned everything up. Thanks for letting me go. Family always comes first, you know? Oh, and I almost forgot. The fresh newspapers from Freeburg are already on your desk. Why do you need them? There's nothing to read in there. It's all just junk. That's right. <laughs> this is like the first game uh, where you'd see these papers every day. That's funny. Under the hypnosis, director of the port warehouses remembered who extorted $2 million bribe, Jack Boyd. Uh, physiognomy specialist, Jack Boyd has a face of typical criminal. And clay cup of Tasala, lost after fire in museum. Stolen by Jack Boyd? They're just blaming everything on Jack Boyd. That's crazy. Mazika is drunk today. Uh, today's the funeral for Moradian. I'd like to go honor the memory of a good cop. That's probably a good idea. Uh, yeah, sure, go. They'll be back soon, but, you know, it's gonna be, gonna be rough. So, tasers get prioritized. I don't feel so bad about using tasers now that I know we can buy these, and it's not actually that expensive. Um, we should also give you... Belmont, you won't use batons. Remember that once and for all, and don't ask me why. <laughs> I didn't know there were, like, weapon restrictions for some of these guys. That's so interesting, man. I keep getting surprised. Okay, so Belmont won't use batons. Alright. Learn something new every day. The Riddle of the Purloined Data. So now, we've got a couple of clues here. Uh, I think we should sort out a couple of more. A couple of extra clues. Um, we'll put Belmont on the case. Try and get some clues. And, uh, we're gonna have a- we're gonna have a really tough shift. But it's okay. We've been saving our beer can tops. They buried Moradian. It was a modest but noteworthy- or but worthy ceremony for those closest to him. He died on a tactical mission. Uh, what does he need here? Cocaine, ground coffee, and paprika. Cocaine, ground coffee, and paprika. Code I. Here's paprika. Where do we get the coffee? Is it this? And then cocaine from here. It's so expensive. I mean, all right, let's see how it works, man. If we really need to sell stuff when things are getting tight, then we can. 524 in progress. Okay, we have a homicide. Elderly patient was smothered to death by a pillow in a hospital bed. Seems like a job for Percy. Mr. Nash, it's great to meet you. Actually, I still had this week off. But when I heard we finally had a real man at the department, I decided to return to work as soon as possible. You'd be amazed at my abilities. I can smell a criminal from a mile away. Okay, we got a new guy. Woolbag. My name is Woolbag. Uh, a drunken worker at the front gate is fighting with a guard because he's been kicked off the job site. Well, Woolbag, let's see what you got, pal. Maybe not. Hold on. I think we just sent Fletcher and Aranovich here. Or maybe I can do, like, something like this. Uh, can these guys fit? Let's do something like that. Spread the experience around a little bit more, and then we have this guy who could maybe do a 500 job, if it comes up. I, I think the coffee thing s sits here, but I'm gonna wait and just send, uh, probably Percy or somebody. Winter Nights, Howard Kim. Mr. Nash, you're new in town. I don't know if you can be trusted, but I'd be fucked if I went to that woman who's wearing the sheriff's badge. After all, we know how she got it, right? Anyway, listen. In the rec center, where I work as a bathhouse attendant, some fugitives from prison have taken up residence. They pass themselves off as some construction investors, but last night I accidentally overheard them talking about how they broke out of Ripton Prison, robbed a secondhand store, and are now waiting for their homies to help them across the border. Uh, everything would be fine, but one of them noticed me, and long story short, they jumped out and messed me up so bad, I haven't even stopped bleeding yet. 
When they left, they told me they'd beat the fuck out of me if I told anyone anything. <laughs> and here I am telling you. I also heard uh, they're going back to be... They're going to be staying low for five days while news of their escape quiets down. Listen, I can't go back to work in this condition. No way. Plus, I'm worried they won't keep their word and kill me right in my bathhouse. Uh, I heard that they're going to be staying low for five days. Prison? Okay. Fugitives from prison in five days. Something's going to happen. Pass himself off as construction investors. Oh, whoa. You normally have a few days to prepare an assault. Oh, hello. What is this now? To carefully plan the operation, you need to collect all information you can and pick the right job for each of your cops. Okay, so we had this, like, at the tutorial in the beginning. So this is, like, planning for uh, a tactical mission. Uh, get the key for the back entrance and warn the manager about the assault. Gather intel. Here you can gather all the information necessary. I can tell you how to open the gate. I almost stuck into the sauna once. <laughs> I know exactly how you can lock down that main entrance. I can tell you what's going on in the kitchen. I see what's going on at the entrance. I know where one of the criminals is resting. Get the key to the back entrance and warn the manager about the assault. Okay. Tell you how to open the fence gate. 500 bucks. Alright. Our sauna is surrounded by a solid fence, and the gate's always locked from the inside when the sauna is on. To get by, you need someone strong so we can climb the fence and open the door from the inside. Okay. So we gotta have, like, that jumper thing. Does that actually show us? Oh, no. Oh! Assign cops. Carefully consider your intel and select cops that are ideal. Fence in front of the sauna. You need a strong cop, but climb over the fence and get the door from the inside. I gotcha. Okay. Okay. Know exactly how you can lock down the main entrance for 250. Fool's plan to climb, in, climb into hell through one hole. Stun them and immediately secure the front door. You'll need someone with a good, strong voice who can keep things cool or the bastards might die. decide to die fighting. So how does that play in? Negotiation. Cop negotiator will be needed. He can compel the criminals to lay down their arms without a fight. Oh. So I wonder, that's something we can use in our tactical missions now. Uh, somebody with negotiation and this. I know it says they surrender easier when wounded, so I always thought like we'd have to shoot them first. But uh, I guess if you have negotiation, that can work out nicely. And I feel like we're going to get ripped off here. I visited these guys a couple of times. We had a good time. If they're waiting for someone, they leave the fence gate open. But the doors to the sauna, they always keep open so no one can walk past unnoticed. One time I was going to surprise them and tried to climb through the window, but it was locked. I tried to open it by the time I got in. I made so much noise that the surprise was gone, and so was my tip. But if you can open the window unnoticed, these guys won't know what hit them. So then we need somebody with the, uh, the burglary perk, right? Burglary and a stun grenade. Cool. This is costing us a lot of money. But it says we need to get all the information. Tell you what's going on in the kitchen. These guys come keep coming into the kitchen. We tell them to get out and they ignore us. They come in to order something, taste the sausages, and yell about our cooking. They're lightning fast, but I'm quick too, and I always manage to spit in their soup. So that what does that tell me? Uh, what is this one? If you want a cop to take position in the kitchen, you'll need to be quick. Okay. See what's going on at the entrance. 50 bucks. Always yells at his friends when anything rustles. I know where one of the criminals is resting. The group's members are always spread throughout the complex, but one usually stays in his room reading magazines and no one wants to bother him. I don't know what exactly he's reading about, but the door's always locked. I can't even get in to clean the room. Okay. So, it tells us exactly what we need, which is 
kind of cool, but it's very expensive. We need to get a key for the back entrance. I have no clue. Maybe that comes up later. And then we assign our strike team in three days. And we have another call. Another... Oh, here. Hold on. We need to get the key for the back entrance and call off the security guard who stands guard near the door and any other personnel. The manager has the keys, but they need to be collected from him at home in the evening and not at work so the criminals don't notice the cops. The manager will provide us the key and tell the employees of the complex to go home early on the night of the assault. All right, cool. We can do this later. 527 in progress. Beauty and the Beast hair salon. Homicide. Okay, we don't have the requirements. Mr. Nash, it went well. I'm glad my colleague had a decent funeral. Thanks for letting me go. You're welcome. Went well. Decent funeral. Cool. Now, can we hit this? No. 530 in progress. Uh, the drunken worker takes a boxing stance, menacing the guardian, yelling, Come on, son, I'll sting you like a bee. <laughs> uh, take a right-handed or left-handed boxing stance. I don't... Is right-handed like your power hand, the one in the back? So he's left-handed, I guess? I don't know what would be better. Let's just pick up a baton. My friend, you aren't playing by the rules. Takes a knife from his pocket. Uh, let's knock it out with the baton. He throws down the knife. Right then, let's have a little match. The worker team's thrilled by the opportunity. <laughs> no thanks. Stunned with a baton. Five twenty-four. There we complete. go. Sleep tight, baby. Got some beer. And let's go speed. Okay. 610. An elderly man was reaching for a bottle on the top shelf and accidentally knocked it over directly under the head of a woman who was standing next to him. She became furious, grabbed a piece of the broken glass, and pounced on the officer. All right. Aranovich and flower pots. Now, what's this? Uh, Davis Tricks. I'm a former mayor, retired with full honors. When the military base in Sharpwood closed, a man should take a box of all sorts of test samples of military gadgets. Uh, there are some listening devices among them, which I'm sure will be useful in your work. I'll give you a why or two, but first you have to help me. Here's the situation. Wife kicked me out of my house because supposedly I drink too much. What else am I supposed to do on retirement? She kicked me out and she started bringing younger men around. I even found out about an insurance agent, Mick Schlipsy, the kid's in his 30s. So here's what I want. Send a younger cop to my wife, and we'll give him a wire to take along. Since it turns out she's such a whore, <laughs> your man should easily be able to seduce her. Uh, and we'll record everything. I'll present it as evidence in court and get a divorce from the slut, and she won't be seeing a cent of my military pension. Uh, okay. Percy, probably? Percy, probably. I think I could send Muzika here. Cocaine, ground coffee, paprika. Yep, nice. No one came. Oh boy. Five twenty-four in progress. We'll send someone here by the end of day. Passerby reports that a photographer is fighting with a local doctor. Hmm. That'll have to wait. And by waiting, I mean get ignored almost completely. Uh, you probably already heard about my... Oh. Wait, we just sent somebody here. Maybe we can constantly be getting something? Can we just always be getting stuff from him? Is that how that works? Frick, I don't know. We can send these dudes. Tired as a dog, needs some rest. Kurosawa, my man. Alright, cool. Thanks for your help. A large woman with a cut on her head was pin has pinned an old man to the bottle rack and is trying to dive drive a broken bottle into his filthy arthritic face. Several other bottles have rolled onto the floor, but didn't break. Uh, we have some strength. Go ahead, flower pots. Five nice. thirty complete. Try to put up a fight, but then fainted. Apparently affected by your head injury. Makes sense. And Tranger Armagnac. All right. 536 in progress. So we can send these dudes. Muzika's drunk, but 
Hopefully he does okay. Drunk man bot is dashing into mine so he'd be killed and cooked in a pie. The animal's whining and pulling at the leash, and the man responds by kicking. What the? Frick. Send a younger cop. I don't think Kurosawa's gonna do anything now, right? Man, I don't know what's happening with this, because we did send somebody. But maybe the coffee wasn't correct or something. Wait, is the coffee gone? Yeah, the coffee's gone, so it must have worked. Hmm. Maybe we'll learn about that later. Because it's a truth serum, right? Uh, Kurosawa, I don't suppose you do this, eh? Yeah, classic. We could th send him to the bathhouse, but we gotta start saving our money again. We've been spending pretty heavily. Uh, we'll send these two again. Uh, we'll send Percy to the... to the woman. The doctor has detained a photographer as the clin at the clinic gates. The photographer's whining. It's a street picture for a Freeburg art project, you narrow-minded asshole. Get off me. I document human suffering. Let's use negotiation here. Freeburg sucks. The photographer is incensed by the cop's remark. Sharpwood is shitty little bastard one-horse town with no taste. Upon hearing this, the doctor finally loses his temper. He pushes the photographer hard onto the ground. As he falls, he smashes his head on the curb. Seeing this, the doctor moves to escape. Shit. Take him out with a sniper. Uh, well, let's tase, I guess. We don't have the- we don't have a lot of speed. We have some. Let's tase. 524 complete. He did kill a guy. That sucks. Okay, Percy. Any time now. I could maybe send Woolbag, although I don't know how young he looks. Uh, a drunk man steps in the dog's paws and shoves to the cook. Turn it into any kind of pie. I'm not picky. You could even do sausages. The point is still the same. The smut couldn't even learn to use the toilet. Well, sounds like a baton. The dashing grabs a baton and attempt to protect the master. Oh, frick. What? I, I don't have a choice. Oh, this is going to be so bad. We have to do it. I don't have a choice. The cop stabs a dash in the stomach and dies almost instantly. Meanwhile, the master runs out of the bakery. Oh, do we tase again? I guess. 536 wow. Complete. Won't be eating his dog. Thought he might have preferred to prison food. We killed it! That's rough, man. Fletcher looks decently young enough, maybe, to deal with this. Percy looks the youngest. Whoa. Something suspicious. There are rumors in the city of three strange men who were recently seen in a pub. Obviously weren't from around here. They're armed, dressed like special agents or spies. They looked around, made some notes in their notebooks, and walked up to the bar. Obviously not for a drink. I wonder what brought them here. Yeah, I don't wonder. Okay. Cops prepared to report on the work they've done. Found new clues. So the cleaner says, Problems started as soon as the computer thing appeared in the hospital. Some of the patients got nervous that their files were being stored inside, inside of some crazy machine. Others got too curious. I recently had to chase off a little man who'd whisked his way into the office and sat down at the computer. He was almost the size of a child. So I took him by the ear and led him out. And Longo, the guy who works on the computer, I never liked him. He's always so glum. Sits like an owl watching the screen while I wash the floor. Doesn't even pick up his legs. I brought a pot of flowers in for him to spruce things up, and he just grunted and told me they wasn't going to water them. One more job for me. And today when I got here, the door was wide open, and the pot was laying on the floor below the sill, all scattered. I started cleaning up the windowsill, and then I saw the footprints. It was enough to spill the flowers. He had to trample all over them. He's gone completely crazy from that computer. So that does give uh, some credence to breaking into the window, but I'm not sure how the bars work. Chief Physician, this year I came back from a conference in Freeburg with the goal of modernizing the work we do at the hospital. I wanted to get the paperwork down to a minimum and start using a personal computer. 
but the doctors didn't want to learn how to use a computer and threatened to quit if I made them. So I had to hire a young assistant, Longo Gardmeister, who would transfer all the information from the patient's cards into the computer. I set up an office for him on the first floor in our secure wing with bars on the windows because that computer was worth a fortune. Me and Longo had the only two keys, so I don't even know what to think because the office door wasn't broken. Longo was a funny old loner, although sometimes he said he'd have... He'd one day have more women than the Shah's harem? He was joking, probably. In short, I wasn't surprised that he treated the computer like a living creature. For example, kept the window open even in the winter, saying the draft is food for the technology. Seems like Longo got so attached to the computer that he decided to take it home with him. So he'd have it only for himself. And who else could steal it except Longo? Unless some Houdini picked the lock on the door or wiggled through the bars on the windows. Interesting. So I guess it'll come down to the frames. Okay, now, I need to send somebody here, um, I guess we'll send, uh, Belmont, and what's this now? Uh, Mr. Nash, I need your help. I don't know what to do. My wife has cancer and the usual treatments won't help. I read in a, medic in a medical journal about a new experimental treatment where gold dust is used. I have all the necessary equipment for the procedures, only the material itself is missing. If you could get me at least one gold bar, it would save my wife's life. I'll never forget it. And for as long as you serve in the police, I can take care of any of your wounded cops in every sense of the phrase. I know that sometimes you might rather someone doesn't recover. Oh, so we can control. <laughs> oh, really? So if they get injured, we could just be like, yep, let them go. But this is very expensive. Because the gold bars... Uh, like, we don't even have that cash. And I gotta come up with 20,000, so I gotta start saving. That job is gonna have to wait. Um, what did I send Percy to do that he's not coming back? I can't remember. I'll send uh, Aranovich here. He looks young. Ish. Oh, there's Percy. All right. Interrogated some of the witnesses and prepared a preliminary report for night terrors on the ward. Dissatisfied patient. Patient sleeps, then he's dead. The victim's bed was wet from urine with another puddle on the floor. Under the old man's bed, there was a dog-eared bookmark. Michael Sandman was asphyxiated with a pillow. His nose is broken. Given the fragility of the old man's bones, a fracture might have occurred from a sharp strike or even from the pressure of a pillow on his face. There were traces of blood on the pillow. His doctors crossed Michael Sandman off the list a long time ago. He regularly coughed up blood, sometimes even pissed on the floor at night. We've got a newcomer, Dan Brom, and all of Michael's carrying on drove him up the wall, even though he was the opposite end of the room. He just couldn't let it go, and Michael made another puddle on the floor. He yelled that he hadn't come to the hospital for biting microbes to crawl over his feet. Funny guy. Figured he'd find a place to hide from the germs, and a place where all the sick people in Sharp would go. I don't know. We'll have to learn more about that later. The, uh... Bribing that guy with the gold dust could be good, but I feel like... Okay, here's the key. I feel like, um... That's a huge investment. Managed to get the lady's ankles over her head, if you know what I mean. True, she wore me out. She's a firecracker, of course. Her husband was upset, but he kept his promise, got the wiretap. Now we're decked out like James Bond. 500 bucks. Well, it's something. We'll see how the wiretap comes into play. Um... Helping that, that guy with the gold bars would be really nice, but we're short on cash, and I don't know how long it is until our next uh, payment, so we'll see. Not a bad day overall. Not a bad day. Three days left. So we're going to have to make sure that we have these people available. Um, like, we're going to have to do this. So, that'll be interesting. 
We have a little bit to prep, though. This is the scary thing about holding on to these. Like, when you're at zero, they can't take anything, right? But if you have a really bad day, you could lose everything you've saved, so... Oh, here we go. Here we go. Uh, I think we hire these two straight up. Boom, boom. We hire Marshall. He's solid. Comes with a shocker. Hire Maguire. Solid. Yeah, beautiful. We'll even pick up another uh, baton, a cartridge. The cartridge is three. All right. Not bad. Okay, so who's going to work tomorrow? Uh, Atkins, Rockman, Marshall, Maguire, Spurlock. There's a lot of people she can work with now, which is kind of good. Clayton, Light, Flowerpots, Mazika, Penkin. And that'll be about it. Okay, not a bad day, guys. We'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.